2050, one in five people in the world will be aged 60 years and older, meaning many of us here will be that one person. Therefore, it is for us we need an age-friendly health system and environment. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the session of Interchange 2022, where I'll discuss the importance of age-friendly health system and making it accessible to all so that everyone has the opportunity to age with grace. I'm Dr. Farah Nanjuraman from Bangladesh. I'm a public health specialist, a gerontologist, and a physician. I'm currently working as a researcher at the International Center for Diarrheal Disease Research Bangladesh, which is the largest national and one of the leading health research institutes. I'm a Commonwealth Scholar of 2019-20 intake and have studied MSc Gerontology at the University of Southampton. I'll speak from my academic and professional experience to provide a glimpse of the health of the older people in Bangladesh. Now, why age-friendly initiatives are important? Because it is an integral part of the overall development of a nation. Promoting active and healthy aging through age-friendly health system can reduce the burden on healthcare facilities and facilitate stronger contribution to the economy by older people. And thus, social, economic, and healthcare burden due to aging can be reduced to a large extent. Despite having this direct linkage, Older population in Bangladesh are under-focused and under-researched. As part of a research team of Center for Injury Prevention and Research Bangladesh has able to generate some evidence on the health of the older people. From a national survey that one out of every 10 older people in Bangladesh is at risk of injury-related morbidity and that injury was responsible for 4% of all deaths among the aged population. Half of the injuries were caused by falls and about 20% of the injuries were caused by traffic accidents. Notably, older people in the lowest socioeconomic quantile were found to be more likely to suffer from injury-related mortality and morbidity. Similarly, about 70% of the older adults suffer from some form of disability in Bangladesh, and the proportion is even higher among the lower socioeconomic groups. Moving on to marginalized groups. Our research found a higher burden of multimorbidity and chronic disease among indigenous older adults, with little to no social support available to them. Older refugees as well as older people who identify as transgender have a lower quality of life and suffer from long-term health consequences. In general, more than half of older adults were not satisfied with the services they received from health facilities and the facilities were found to be largely under equipped both logistically and in terms of human resources to address the needs of geriatric patients. This situation warrants age-friendly initiatives at all levels. Ageism needs to be addressed at individual level, particularly among healthcare providers. At institutional level, health facilities must be more accessible to older people with the availability of a separate geriatric ward and tailored services. Policies need to incorporate capacity building of healthcare providers in geriatrics as well as targeted interventions and resource allocations for marginalized older population. With a comprehensive approach at every level, we'll be able to create a world for all ages.